Well, I got a lot to cover today. Um, first of all, I got two games, um, NBA games we're looking at from last night. Today is December the 7th, um, 18, if you're watching this in the future or a couple of days from now, I'm not sure when I'm going to post it. I'm probably going to end up breaking it down in several videos, but um, I got two games um, to take a look at different contexts for each game. Um, Golden State versus the Cavs, which is going to be a video or which I'm going to cover um, basically how the NBA rigs games. And I'm that's a topic that you can go into for days. Um, I know you could you could cover it from a whole bunch of different angles. You could look at the media. You could look at the officiating in the games. You could look at uh, um, all the different tactics they could use. You could look at it from a perspective of what the draft lottery is that rigged. You could look at it from the trades perspective, um, free agency even. I mean, you could look at the things like the excuses people make, like you know their superstar treatment, which is the excuse that's basically like you know, an explanation why it's rigged or why it looked like it was rigged or um, you could have other explanations such as, you know, refs just make mistakes. I mean, you could do a, pretty much a separate video on any of those different categories, but I'm just going to cover the uh, Cavs and Golden State Warriors games. So from a perspective, almost if, even if you don't believe that it's rigged, you could see how it could be rigged, but it is, I mean, it's definitely rigged. Um, not everybody's going to accept that. I know. So, but I want to show you basically the different um, in-game type of things and officiating how that game just affected the first quarter. And also, I got the Spurs game um, versus the, La the um, Lakers um, and LeBron. Both of those games, actually, um, the Cavs game with the Golden State and the Spurs-Lakers uh, game, both big games because both LeBron and Curry had big games. Um, I'm going to cover the first quarter of the uh, Cavs Golden State game, like I said, that's where Curry, I think, had, I had 18 points in the first, and LeBron had 20 in the fourth. I'm going to cover the first and the fourth of the um, Spurs and Lakers games. And from the Lakers' perspective, um, I'm just going to basically look at it from the angle of, because uh, th there's been a controversy over the last couple of days of, with KD uh, mentioning the media and LeBron and being tough to play with. I want to just give a little breakdown of the way LeBron plays. And this is just a random game that I took. Um, obviously, it was the first one that they played since that was last night's game. Um, or was it, yeah, I think it was, it was either yesterday or the day before. I think, it, I think it could have been Wednesday. Yes, it was Wednesday. And then um, I cut the clips on Thursday. And today they'll play the Spurs. Actually, they'll play the Spurs again tonight, which is... Uh, which is Friday, so yeah. Um, but anyway, it was the first game that they played after he made those comments. So I could, it's just a random game to show you the way he plays. It wasn't anything that I looked up specifically. It wasn't anything that I, uh, you know, cut clips from a long time ago. It was right off the fly, just to show you that that's basically how he plays every game. And um, obviously he played well. We'll take a look at that. Uh, I mean, statistically he played well. I think he had 20 in the fourth, like I mentioned. And um, I'll cover that. Also, um, Carmelo Anthony. Um, this is the big story is that Carmelo Anthony is going to be, um, well, not is going to be, but it's has been rumored as of right now of the Lakers picking up Carmelo, um, LeBron being interested in Carmelo, and so the, it's bringing up the whole story again about how you know Houston might have or might not have, depending on your perspective, scapegoated. Uh, Melo uh, as an excuse for why they weren't playing well. Obviously, they're still not playing very well, and um, I want to I want to talk about that a little bit. There's a lot to talk about right there, and um, not necessarily sure if that if that's it. I might get into something else. Um, not really sure. Um, and like I said, I'll probably break this down. Um, right now, this is kind of just the intro. The other videos, once I make them, I'll probably cut them all into one big video. But then I'll probably back off and uh, have in a separate. Uh, individual ones just for the one just because they're separate to they're separate topics all on their own but i want to probably record them all at the same time just because that's the, the way i got it. my uh setup where i got my audio recording and my video editing kind of separate so i'll cut the uh the video right the video the recording portion of it right now and then i'll get the uh, video added in later okay so, um, 
starting out in the uh, Cavs game, Golden State, um, the first thing that you're going to notice right off the bat is uh, miss. This is one of the, the tactics that they use is just blatant miss calls. Um, as far as you know, like maybe even 50 50 calls, you can't tell who it went out on. Uh, there's at least two calls in this game specifically where the ball looked like it went out on Golden State uh, and the Cavs um, didn't get the ball. They gave it back to Golden State despite it looking like an obvious turnover on both of them was actually Kevin Durant. Um, but I mean, this is actually a really good example um, or maybe not the greatest example, just depending on how you want to look at it because uh, there's obviously games where one team is favored to win and the refs, and, but they're the better team. And you would expect that to be the case here because Warriors are, I mean, I mean, I don't even know if it's a debate. The Cavs are one of the worst teams in the East. Warriors are one of the um, better teams in the entire NBA, obviously. So, um, I mean, you'd expect the Warriors to just run away with this. And usually in games like this, you won't see anything. So it's actually surprising that, you know, the Cavs kind of came out to play. And that's another thing that you can notice is at the beginning of a lot of games, the refs will just kind of fill it. Um, but in, in games like this, uh, or, or game just it's like evenly matched teams, but one team might be favored um, because of their popularity it could be a playoff series or something like that. What you'll notice is they'll kind of fill the game out, and if the other team is playing like crazy, then they'll start doing stuff. But where, where it could be a potentially where the favored team maybe isn't as good, sometimes it's the entire game. But I mean, the first quarters and the third quarters tend to be the ones to watch out for. A lot of people like to look in at the fourth. At the end of the game, you might get a couple calls that end up being missed, but sometimes what they like to do is at the beginning of the game, get it before when people's not really watching because people don't really watch the entire games usually. Usually you're late to watch the game or you might catch the very beginning, but then you start doing stuff and or you show up to the game, basically show up late and catch, you know, maybe a little bit of the you know, first half, but then you try to catch the, the second half or the end of the game. So the first quarter and the third quarters, I've noticed sometimes are the quarters, but I mean, they, they could do it really whenever they want, obviously. But um, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. Um, and like I said, it's not going to be that. This game is a good example, like I said, because, you know, one, it's not expected. Um, two, it kind of gives the vibe of some of the games. Because if you watch... Um, like some of the playoff games, like the Pacers versus the Cavs, where the Cavs were basically just a whole bunch of role players in the and the Pacers just came out. Oladipo wanted to play well. Miles Turner wanted to play well. Lance Stevenson, obviously, is one of the most competitive dudes um, in the NBA. Thad Young. Nate McMillan's a good coach. I mean, they came out firing. In that game, like, in that series especially, you could notice a lot. And obviously, the Houston series versus Golden State last year, you could notice. I mean, game seven, six and seven, maybe even. Really, throughout the entire series, you could notice favoritism towards Golden State in that series. I mean, that was blatantly. But, but in this one, like, you wouldn't even expect the Cavs to even play well, and you can notice stuff, which is why I think it's kind of a good example. But, I mean, just starting out, we're going to notice that Durant throws the ball away here. But you're going to notice um, that they give it to uh, – I mean, it, it's close. I'm not saying it definitely didn't, it didn't go out, but it looks for sure like it went out when Golden State, but the refs didn't even hesitate to call it for uh, – call it Golden State ball. And also, you're doing you know, this right here is the, the way they set screens all game and the way they're allowed to get away with setting screens. Obviously, specifically because of the team's a three point shooting team, if they set screens and can get wide open layups and wide open threes, I mean, if that's the style brand of basketball that they want to play for their personnel, it's not just that, um, you know, that's the way every team plays threes and layups or whatever, but they have two guys specifically, um, Clay Thompson and um, Curry, especially. Curry, can go off from three if he gets wide open looks. He's and everybody's game plan is to prevent him from getting wide open looks. And you'll see the way that they set screens starting out the game. But there, here's the first one. I mean, you'll notice this. They're going to show the replay. They're going to replay, and it looks almost obvious that it either goes out on Durant or uh, Thompson. And then here again. You will get Looney basically, um, basically almost running, setting a moving screen on his own player, but he bumps Clay all the way basically back in Rodney Hood and it gets him a shot here. So that's basically two points on the board already where it should be, you know, 0 0 here with Cavs ball, but instead it's 2 0. 
And then um, Cleveland ends up going on a, I think, 12-0 run. But um, they'll end up coming back, as you'll see. Golden State with help with the officials. And um, here again, you see a dribble handoff. I mean, on dribble handoffs, you, I mean, it used to be if you made contact off a dribble handoff, that's going to be automatic moving screen because you're, you're in the path of the player. If you, if you pass them on the ball, you're supposed to pass them the ball and it may, mainly st like stand still or kind of get out of the way of the offensive player to avoid contact. But, I mean, you see Looney clear contact with George Hill and Curry gets a wide open shot here. Then we're going to come back again. Looney in transition is basically going to stop right in uh, George Hill's path. He's not, he doesn't even set up for a screen. He just stops right in his path. Obvious move and screen violation. And um, like I said, none of these even lead to scoring. But uh, when, when it end up happens, it's a cumulative effect of, you know, getting Curry open. And eventually, you know, obviously if he gets open enough, he's going to start hitting shots. And if they would have called those moving screens at the beginning, obviously it could have deterred, you know, the moving screens later, which should have been called, which obviously would have deterred points. So they could have deterred moving screens and they could have deterred the points. Right now we're 2-0 of officiating basically for Golden State plus two off of uh, possessions where they shouldn't even have the ball. And as you see that moving screen again, Curry wide open, bang, three. So now we're 5-0. Now it's 5-12. Basically five uh, officiating points for them. And here you'll notice again, Tristan Thompson has basically a wide open advantage Basically, he gets fouled by Durant, and they call the foul when Tristan Thompson <laughs> against Durant. Durant had his arms basically over top of uh, Tristan Thompson. Basically, the old old school trick, you know, hold down their arms so they can't jump for the rebound. I mean, Durant wasn't in good position, and Tristan Thompson did kind of try to bury him a little bit. But, I mean, that's just physical, physical play, but Durant had his arms tied up. Then we're going to uh, come down again. And we're going to see Clay Thompson here travel. Um, I don't know if this was the next possession or a little bit later, but uh, Clay Thompson has the ball. He pivots off his um, like the foot towards the baseline, but then he doesn't dribble. He puts his other foot back down again. I mean, he turns all the way around to the opposite foot. It gets like in a like a basically like a takeoff phase, <laughs> like drive drive into the um, basket. And then to add insult to injury, he shuffled his shuffled with his feet on his uh, jump stop, or just basically his gather to go up for the basket. Shuffles his feet and basically takes three steps again before he makes the layup. So now we're talking seven points that were just basically gifted from fish shooting. Should have been a couple turnovers. And then again, um, we're looking at George Hill goes in. It looks like obvious a foul from um, Looney not called. And we're going to go down. And this one's pretty funny right here. I mean, that could have been two free throws on that end if you want to keep track. We're basically at seven points for Golden State and could have been maybe negative one or two for uh, the Cavs. So the Cavs could potentially be up 13, 14 to zero and, and Gold State's right in the game, 7-12. But Kevin Durant's going to drive to the basket here. And it's, I mean, it's basically hilarious because he drives to the basket and like he gets like mad. He gets upset and starts yelling at the ref. I assume because he thinks because I didn't see the defender do anything like crazy, like grab him or anything. But Durant like puts his head down and basically he's trying to get to the basket, try to generate some offense. It kind of drives into him. And I think what he, I think what he's thinking, because he can't see the ref, is he's thinking that the, because the ref's calling a, a block when it wasn't a, really a block. I mean, the dude had, had position. Durant was just trying to use his body and put his shoulder down to create some space. And Durant, I think it's mad because he thinks this is going to be a charge call. Which, I mean, it could have been a charge call. <laughs> it could have definitely been a charge call. It would have been soft, but, you know, it, could, it, it would have been a, a decent, okay call. But Durant turns around, like, angry. And I don't think that, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that he's angry because he thinks it was about to be a foul on him. And then he kind of looks like, oh. And then we got another moving screen here. And Durant gets wide open from the elbow. Bangs it. So we're talking nine points already, which should have been Turner. In fact, the Cavs might have even been in the bonus by now. And we're going to have a post up by Tom Thompson. And this is how you're going to notice that the NBA could, have, could influence games for big men totally. Like, if you want to know why there's not dominant big men or why teams don't throw it down to the post, even if they just had an average big man or just a guy like Tristan Thompson who could score inside, um, it's because, I mean, as you can see right here, Kevin, 
uh, Looney, I think I think his name's Kevin Looney. I know his last name's Looney. But uh, leans on him from the very time he gets the ball. He's leaning on him, leaning on him. I mean, this used to be just automatic fouls for big guys. And then he's all, leaning all the way over top of him, has his hands all over him. And then uh, at Thompson tries to go for the jump hook. Um, I mean, he's all in his face, all up in his body. Uh, doesn't give him any room. <laughs> he's obviously not straight up. He's walking into his body. And uh, Thompson could have free throws. Dead. They could have another foul. I'm pretty sure Looney was already in foul trouble at that point. But instead, Golden State comes right back down, and we're talking like already like 11 points basically gifted to him. And we got another one. I don't really know if this is even contact. Um, I just added it in there. I can't really see from the angle. But it was potentially could have been an and one. But, I mean, obviously you're talking about 11 points already. When It, it, it could, at this point, it's 14-11. It could be very easily... 20 to nothing it could be i mean it could be like 21 something to to uh maybe like eight or something maybe depending if golden state called a timeout and try to get something going but instead it's 14 to 11 and you know it's just kind of crazy and here we want to see curry basically push off and then thompson said i mean i guess you call it a screen I mean, he's not it's basically if it's football i guess that's a block and then Curry's going to get wide open again. And he misses this one again, obviously. But if you're giving Curry wide open look, wide open look, I mean, eventually he's going to get a rhythm and it's going to be over for your, your team. I mean, you cannot compete with Stephen Curry, one of the greatest shooters of all time, being allowed to set moving screens so he can get wide shots. I mean, I just, I mean, it's a recipe for disaster for any team. But obviously the other team can't do anything. Well, you can do something. You could just do what Houston did last year, which is actually like um, impeccable communication skills and like switching on a, like a dime like perfect switching so that basically their screens don't even matter because you're switching everything at least like a zone and th that's what houston did to them last year in the playoffs but that's really 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 hard to do for a uh, really hard to like because your communication has to be there your switching has to be there you have to be able to handle all those mismatches that they're going to get with um i mean durant last year it was on uh cp3 and they handled it but, you know, here's another one. He steps right into his path right there. And then we get another wide up from the lane. And it should, it should have been a foul on Thompson there, but I think the ref's just like, let it go, let it go. And then we'll get another one here. Like a pretty egregious one. He basically falls all the way into his body. Should have been an obvious moving screen. Instead, we got Curry, Showtime, wide open shot. I mean, it was 20 to, um, 20 to like... Uh, 14 there so I brought him like within three or something like that but again here's another one out of bounds and again I should have been out of, out on um, Durant I'm pretty sure uh, but they gave Golden State obviously the benefit of the doubt and Golden State's still losing here like we had all that officiating help in the Cavs like, like I said the Cavs could have been up by a lot I mean, the Cavs are in a bonus at this point, so I mean, a couple of, a couple of those fouls would have been uh, free throws, eventually. But instead, you get Curry three. So now you're talking. I think it was like what it was like eleven or twelve points. Now 13, 14, 15, something points that was just gifted to him. Here's an interesting one right here. Um, Colin Sexton beats uh. Curry off the dribble here, but I never seen this actually before. But watch Golden State's players here. This is this is what's fishy, because watch what um, J I think Jerefko and uh, I think it would be Bell, Bell. Like neither one of them is guarding; they're both secondary defenders. But w they they basically take out um, the two most important players that like can transition. Your center who needs to go back and get back and protect the rim. And your point guard who needs to stop the ball. It basically took both of them like out, like almost on purpose. Like you can see, like they're basically like boxing them in to the baseline, and it gives it basically a three one. It's so basically three on three, but you're talking three like you're talking about Durant, Curry, and Livingston versus uh like forwards and like one one guard or basically the guards, but no, no big man back. Your point guard isn't back, and it gets an easy layup again. Okay, that's that game. Next game we're looking at is the Spurs. 
the Spurs versus the Los Angeles LeBrons. And I basically just want to show how what, what LeBron does to your team um, offensively. So there's not going to be a lot of defensive highlights in this. This is basically going to be LeBron on offense. And he does, I mean, come on, he, he does well. But you can see like how it hampers like the, like the offense. Like, Because say he didn't make some of these shots. Like he had a good game from three. If he didn't make those threes, they would have they would have lost the game, and they would have lost the game to um, a Spurs team without Pau Gasol, without uh, Murray or their point guard, um, and with Aldridge in foul trouble. Um, they would have lost to the Spurs again. But he, but LeBron takes over and he does well, which isn't every night. I mean, but um, here you want to see actually a good. They start out the, the game actually well. Like LeBron's not dominating the ball here. He had the ball for a minute, but he gave it up. They run a nice play. They get Ingram wide open, but here's one of the things. I mean, since we're fresh off the NBA rig stuff, um, <laughs> take a look at this. Um, Phantom. I think it's a Phantom on um, Aldridge, and obviously he's one of their most important players. And if he's out of the game, which he was, and Greg Popovich addressed it, addressed it at the end of the quarter to say, yeah, Aldridge ended up having two fouls, and that killed him. But here we got LeBron at point, and um, what, I mean, LeBron James is not a point guard. People who say he's one of the greatest passers, I mean, I understand why they, they would say that, but I mean, other guys, I mean, no one ever called the people on this team the greatest cutters ever. It's because LeBron finds them. <laughs> I mean, there's tons of people who can make passes. Obviously, there's, you know, point guards throughout the NBA who could average more assists than LeBron averages. Okay, I mean, obviously, there's tons of better like passers, ball handlers. LeBron's not a good ball handler at all. Um, he's not quick. He's not good at getting into the to the lane. I mean, well, he's he's okay at getting into the lane, but if you put a decent defender on him, most of the time he's only good at getting to the lane because they got crappy got the guys trying to defend him, as you will see in this game. But um, yeah, I mean, he really has no business playing point guard. He just dominates the ball right here, and you can see how it kind of hurts their team. Right here, you can get sort of a moving screen, and LeBron's going to get into the lane. But basically, you just got guys standing around, standing around. Then ball has to get open and drive, and then Kuzma ends up settling for the shot, and he makes it. But, I mean, to me, that's not how you run an offense. Okay? Maybe people would disagree as the game goes on. But here you got the Lakers again. But Kuzma get, bringing the ball up, which is just equally kind of ridiculous. But LeBron again playing point guard. I mean, you got Lonzo Ball on your team. Lonzo Ball, why would you make him play off ball? He needs to be playing at one ball. He needs to get his point guard skills up. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, there's so much wrong with it. I mean, one, you're, de you're, you're deterring his progress. Um, you're hampering his uh, potential by not letting, letting him play point guard on ball. Um, you're making him have to like play outside of his game already. I mean, it's nice that he could learn to play off ball. Cool. Learn to play off ball, yeah. But you want to learn to play off ball and play your position. And LeBron just wants to dominate the ball. I mean, he just like he want like he wants to do it. Like it's like almost like an obsession. Like he can't get like he can't get away with not having a ball. It's like a drug or something. Like where every time down the court he wants to dominate it. And right there. I think we might have had a travel right there. Yeah, this was a travel, but I mean, they never call travels on LeBron, but you're going to say, basically, he has possession of the ball right there on that plant foot. And, it, and it, that's the easy way to tell travels. If you see, like, obviously, he got his hand under the ball right, right here. If um, you have your foot in contact with the ground, like, your foot advance. Like, obviously, if you go to the, uh, the right side of the basket, you shoot off your left foot usually. So if you see them have them that left foot forward when they, when they're uh, they're putting their hand into the ball and they gain control of it because that's where where's where the starting point is if when you can't no longer when you can no longer put the ball on the ground is where the starting point of you stopping your dribble is. Um, obviously he got this ball clutched. It doesn't matter if you do it in two hands because um, obviously the players in the NBA got gigantic hands. They can stop the ball. They can carry it. They can palm it with one hand, and he does that here. And you got one, and then his outside foot. And that's a travel. I mean, the definition, I mean, of a travel basically is uh, you could pick up your pivot foot to shoot or to pass, not to dribble. Obviously, if you pick up your pivot foot trying to dribble, that's a travel. 
but to shoot or to pass, you could pick up your pivot foot, but you can't put it back on the ground again. And this, and that's that's how you get the two steps going to the basket. It's the pivot foot, picking up the pivot foot, and shooting. I said one, two. That's the that's the rhythm. That's the the uh, the contact points. But here he he puts his pivot foot on the ground. He pivots off of it. He puts his other foot. He lays the pivot foot back on the ground. Should have been an automatic travel call. I mean, maybe the refs was just saying, "Oh, we didn't, we don't know where he gathered the ball." But you could see, obviously, he clutched the ball and carried it. So and that's how he hurts your offense. Obviously, they got points there, so it didn't. Ref it doesn't reflect in the score. It doesn't reflect in the stats. It doesn't reflect at all um, in the game. But you can see how that would have hurt them if it would have been a travel call. Would have been turnover. Wouldn't have been points. And again, you got LeBron. He didn't carry the ball at this time, but now he's the one running the pick and roll. And then he just loses it out of bounds. Gets knocked out. They get the ball back there. But then we're coming back again. You got Ingram with the ball, but then it's straight back to LeBron. And it's basically LeBron trying to find shooters. And then they run this move. I don't know if that was a travel or not. Who cares? Could have been. But, I mean, you see Kuzma with the ball, what he could do. But when LeBron wants to, to dominate, I mean, if you had Kuzma on one side trying to with a scoring position, and then you had LeBron, and you had Ingram, and you had them rotating out of the post, and you had them cutting and passing, and, uh, you know, Lonzo Ball distributing, and then it's setting up, and then McGee, and you had all those guys. I mean, you dominate teams inside. I mean, you dominate. You score every time down the court. You score every time down the court. And then once they started collapsing in the paint, you start kicking it out. You start hitting some threes and scoring in the paint. I mean, it'd be over. I mean, it'd be a landslide because by the time you start hitting those threes and, and there's, the other team realizes there's nothing they could do. But again, you got LeBron trying to dribble, run, pick and roll, and he's just not very good at it. And he throws the ball away. He's just not very good at it. I mean, he makes that play sometimes, but he's just not very, like a great point guard. And it hurts the team because it doesn't allow other people, it doesn't allow the ball to play point guard, which is his real position. It makes him play shooting guard, which he's not. He's not even like a combo type guard. Um, I mean, he has the height for it, but he doesn't have the, the skill set. That's not what he wants to do. Um, he doesn't have the strength either, especially for a defensive end. But here you got, again, the picking around the shooters. And then Kuzma ends up scoring. So that's obviously a better possession. Um, a lot better than some of the other ones where LeBron dominates the ball too much. But here again, LeBron gets the ball. And it's basically LeBron looking around, looking around. Then decides to pull up like it's Wardell. We got Wardell, Steph, and James out there. LeBron's best Curry impression. And again, if the shots go in like they did in the fourth, great. But then in games where someone actually decides to deem up, and when someone actually decides to make it hard on him and he's not just standing still and basically shooting it's comfort, it's comfort zone more than it is a contested shot. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, it was a great contest, so it must have been great defense. Defense is about making another person uncomfortable. That's this is the mental state of them being frantic. Because if a person, if you could, you could get right up, that's like why Kobe was such a great player. It, you couldn't make him uncomfortable. Kobe, could, that's why he made all them difficult shots where people was like, man, you couldn't play better defense than that. It was because Kobe practiced so much and was just so, he, he got so comfortable on the court that no one could could mess with his rhythm. And he could come, pull up for a shot like that and he always had his form. He always had his uh, technique. And it was splash a lot of times with Deuce like right on him. But again, you can see LeBron hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball. And it's basically everybody else trying to get open. And then you can guarantee... Like if other people get open and they don't make the shots as we get a moving screen right here from Chandler, then who's it on? Like, you know, if Ingram doesn't make the shot, then it's all oh, Ingram can't make shots when it's basically LeBron dominating the ball and Ingram and them having to run in and shoot difficult shots like this. But here's, uh, I think, Audrey's second foul right there, which it was it was a flagrant. They called it a flagrant. Um, you got to give these ch chances to land nowadays. They're, I mean, that's in, it's in the rules now, which is, I mean, that's a good rule. Um, I mean, obviously, you're in their space. You're trying to hurt them. I mean, that's not basketball. There's no really room for that. Um, it's not even like w one thing I think it is a mistake is when they try to say is like you you can't foul people to prevent layups, which obviously you have fouls, and that's part of basketball to be able to foul people. And it, but they call that not not basketball. But I mean, you have to go for a block, and but you can't prevent them from going up for a layup. I think is ridiculous. 
but something like that, I mean, we're crowding our space like that. I mean, there's, I mean, there's no benefit of it besides hurting somebody. But again, you have LeBron at point, and we won't have, Co I think, Josh Hart here. And again, if the shooters don't make it, it's their fault. Because, oh, LeBron set you up. But I mean, I mean, he's not setting them up. He's setting himself up for assists. He's setting himself up. And that's how he gets stats every game. Because he's always dominating the ball. He's always passing the people who's supposed to be shooting. It's their responsibility to make it. And if they don't make all their shots and they don't do this and they don't do that, the team doesn't do well and, and LeBron doesn't get any blame for it. He doesn't get blamed for dominating the ball like this. And that's what Durant was talking about. The style LeBron plays and the amount of fanboys he has in the media, he could play this way. No one criticizes him for being a pack point guard. No one really criticizes him when he has bad games. But then when he gets all these stats, people um, praise him and praise him and praise him and praise him. Like he's the savior, but what's really going on is he's just dominating the ball. And here you're going to get a punch down, which was actually good off that little moving screen by LeBron. Again, which could have been called, and it would have been a turnover. But Ball actually did punch one down right there. And the announcer with the uh, with the hilarious freaking bring, bring in the smoke. But then you got this shot right here again. I mean, who's, who's fault is that going to be? Oh, they're not making shots. If they end up losing this game. And here is just kind of a side, but man, you'll notice that um, Lance Stevenson does some dumb stuff, and he'll have a Shaq and a Fool highlight coming up, which was on Shaq and a Fool. LeBron has one too, but obviously LeBron's not going to be on Shaq and a Fool because because the media. But um, Stevenson, the way he plays D, the way he D's up, I mean, you can see a tremendous. Because look, look at you can look at the score when Stevenson came in the game. San Antonio was up. But you'll see just how he D's up, man. It's not even about like the fact that he could also he could also score, he could also get really hot on offense. But he always he always D's up one on one. One on one, he's an intimidating defender. He makes dudes uncomfortable because he's long, he got them big hands, he's strong. You can't you can't just go into him and, and body him and get space. He holds his ground. As you see, that's the bronze shack for right there. But I mean, it's just but here you can see Stevenson with the ball. And Stevenson's a lot better at running the point because of his handling ability. But he just he's just not comfortable comfortable all the time doing it. And he needs he he has coaching points which you could easily fix because he gets over anxious and likes to do other stuff. But as you can see, you get penetration, you get a kick out LeBron for an open shot, then LeBron drives and you get another kick out for a wide open shot and he misses it. But they're out of position and Lonzo Ball gets a wide open tip and they get the ball back again. And you got Stevenson again drives. Kicks out to a wide open man, and he kicks it over, and you're open again. I mean, this is the type of ball movement that you could have sometimes when the when you know someone else is able to play. But obviously, you can see where LeBron is is out there standing. I mean, which is again that's one of the problems with playing with LeBron. I mean, if LeBron got in the post as big as he is, and just just got on with people, got in their bodies, got foul calls. I mean, slowed the game down. Uh, got easy buckets inside. Learn how to, learn how to use this, you learn how to use post footwork. Learn how to use post moves. Allowed other dudes to be able to penetrate off the dribble, make passes, make assists. I mean, it opened the game up tremendously for everybody on his team. Everybody would be able to play their own position. You wouldn't have to have Lonzo Ball out here playing freaking. What is he right now? Three is Lonzo Ball on the court. Literally, look at the people on the court right now. You got the Ron James plays point. What is it? Because this time Stevens was playing points. So what the, what the hell is Lonzo Ball and what the hell is uh, Kenny out here? Uh, Katadius Caldwell Pope. I mean, are they freaking power forwards? Are they are they small forwards? I mean, I don't even know. It was like a college ball. But, you know, LeBron again, once they swing the ball around here, he ends up eating it again. and uh, But he ends up getting bailed out with the foul call, which was a foul. I think they reviewed it for Flagger. I can't remember, remember or not, but it was a foul. But they they bailed him out. I mean, it would have been a bad shot. He might have he might have missed it anyway, even if they didn't hit him. But but here again, you got Stevenson playing bully ball out there, Just knocks the guy out of the way. <laughs> Which there could have been a blocking foul, really. Guy wasn't in position. But Stevenson barely looked like he hit him. He was need to get in the weight room out here. But One of these is going to be Stevenson shocked in the full highlight. I don't know which one it is, but it's funny. That wasn't even it. 
but <laughs> that wouldn't even end. Stevenson needs to get his stuff together. He just needs to stop uber penetrating. He needs, he needs to uh, start playing on the perimeter, perimeter and trying to get stop trying to get to the rim all the time. But LeBron actually does bail him out right there with a nice shot. But again, he's <laughs> back at it again. This time it's late in the shot clock, so it's kind of okay. Bang. But you can see, you can see, I mean, like like I said, when they make the shots, that's why it's always LeBron and shooters because that's how he likes to play right there. But you you understand, like, if he played it in the post, it wouldn't have to be LeBron and shooters because you could have LeBron and dudes cutting to the basket. You could have LeBron and dudes shooting mid-ranges. You could have, you know, LeBron and, um, you know, scoring himself. <laughs> But instead, because of the style of play that he wants to play, it has to be LeBron and it has to be shooters. Because he wants to have the ball in the perimeter. He wants to dribble drive when he's not a good dribble driver. And basically, the only reason people collapse in is because they want to slow him down and he leaves people wide open. But obviously, one of the strategies that's been recent is just um, has been um, just leaving other guys open and trying to make LeBron score. I mean, that worked out for uh, the Pacers, for example, last year in the playoffs, uh, which they got ripped off, but nonetheless, it worked. I mean, LeBron went off for a lot of points, but the Pacers should have pretty much won the series. And again, we got a good play. Um, I think I think this is when they called a timeout because they were down. This is the fourth quarter, and they ran a set play, and um, for there was I mean, Spurs was way out of position. I don't even know what the hell they were doing. But again, LeBron again, fourth quarter again, dominating the ball. Coming off shooter. I mean, I mean, and Kuzma is an excellent scorer inside, but I mean, with LeBron, he's happened to be a shooter. And when he could be a scorer inside, he could be he could do damage. He could do damage. He's not a great three-point shooter, streaky. Sometimes he'll go for like O for something. He'll be an O for. But inside, I mean, he got automatic game. Jump hooks. Uh, get contact, body and people, you know, whatever. Inside Kuzma's a, a scorer. He, he's a nice scorer. But then you get the little moving screen here and you get another travel move by LeBron. But again, like if these, these were called turnovers. Like you could imagine how bad LeBron would look on the court if a lot of those travel looking moves was called turnovers. But again, LeBron dominating the ball. And basically here, he's just, well, that's not one, one of the ones, but there he ends up getting a side and just breaking it. And then here he gets a good foul. That was a foul. That was that was a good play by LeBron. That was a transition play. That wasn't even him dominating the ball. That's something that he could do well, which is just get out on the break. I mean, this is the this is good basketball right here. LeBron just gets it. He knows no one could stop him once he gets a full head of steam. He takes off and gets buckets. I mean, that's what you need LeBron doing all the time. Like as a coach, that's what you're telling LeBron. That's what we need you doing. We don't need you dominating the ball. And that's what Kobe and Magic was talking about not too long ago. LeBron doesn't have to play on, on ball all the time. He can get out on breaks. He could post up. It's what he needs to learn how to do. And here we get another travel move. No call, but they call foul. A lot of this, like again, you could imagine, because they was down and LeBron brought him, brought him back when those drives, really. But he ends up hitting some threes, which I'm gonna, we're going to get to eventually. Eventually, he's going to start hitting some threes. But And again, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I probably wasn't moving screen again by Chandler, but... I mean, if he if it's up to if he hits them, because if he doesn't hit them, then you can see how bad they look. And there's another move that's a potential travel move. <laughs> and again, like if he's making them, they're not calling turnovers on him. We're good. But imagine if those were turnovers. Imagine if he missed those threes. Imagine if um, I mean, there were some plays which I don't know if I have them in this highlight, but there were some plays where Hart um hit some threes. If he doesn't hit those threes, what happens? And who gets blamed? That's what that's what uh, in the media who gets blamed. That's one of the, Kevin Durant's points. I don't know if it's specifically what he was trying to make, but see if they don't make those shots, then who gets blamed? All oh, Kuzma can't shoot. He needs to learn how to shoot to play with LeBron. Anyway. Here we go again, another deep one. Again, what if it doesn't go in? But I mean, he's wide there. That's just poor defense. You 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 could tell LeBron's getting ready to shoot because he, he like he kind of drops his head a little bit 
looks down and kind of, he kind of he gets right into his shot and he gets that rhythm. The travel by uh, Kuzma. I can show you right here by Kuz. Um, he comes off of this little flare, but you see pivot. Picks up that pivot foot, takes off, ball still in his hand, obviously. It's obvious in fast mode, but in slow mode, you can obviously see it's obvious, obvious travel. That's probably a foul there by Tyson Chandler when it rebound. But then you get LeBron again, you get ball. And I mean, if they make him, they make him. But heck, that could have been a, a foul on another end right there. LeBron gets so much benefit of the doubt by rest. People don't pay attention to that type of stuff. But this is the end of the game here. Boom. Again, he makes it. He's the hero. That's pretty much the game. Um, I think there's a couple more highlights. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and fast forward past these. Pretty much over at this point. LeBron does go off, but I mean, like, like I said, you can see, oh, that's, that was a block. That was a block. They don't call it, but he ends up getting a wide open layup, which they should have been shooting free throws, and we know how LeBron shoots free throws, so that was pretty messed up. But that's pretty much it. And um, the other things that I wanted to discuss, um, I'll probably I'll, I'll just cut it short with Mello. I'll make it quick on Mello. Um, Mello is being scapegoated by the NBA, um, not just the Houston Rockets, but by the NBA in general. I won't tell you why. This analytic movement got a lot of these guys' jobs who don't do who they don't know anything about basketball. Um, got a lot of coaches' jobs who suck. Um, you can look at the Houston Rockets, um, Dan Tony. Um, he's not a great coach, uh, period. He's not a good coach. Um, I mean, he's a good offense. I mean, offensively, his teams do cool. Do they win championships? No. If they didn't have as good of players as they have. Because, I mean, Dan Tony gets bailed out by just having just players. I mean, what it was Steve Nash, Harden, Chris Paul. I mean, I think they had Maury Stoudemire back then. Um, maybe even, I can't remember who was on the, the Suns, when he coached the Suns, but they had a squad. They had a squad. I, mean, I think Grant Hill might have been on there. Like when he was coming back. And um, they had, back when they had Boris D. when they put him, there was no that small ball stuff. It didn't work. But what the NBA wants to convince people is this analytic stuff is, is the craze. And they can't back it up with the way teams are playing. They got... You know that the fans know the fans are out there. They know no one. They, there's no one out. There's no one out there playing defense. There's no great defenders anymore. They know that. They know that there's not. You know all these crazy scores. You know there's okay scores, but you know all this three stuff. You you can watch games. I mean you watch you watch the uh, Houston last year when they was like what like twenty something missed threes. But that's winning basketball. That wins you championships. I mean they won them games during the regular season. Okay, but that's because that's, everyone's playing that way. What happened when the Lakers were playing a different way, but teams were playing that way? They had to break the Lakers up. Why did they have to break the Lakers up? Because they would have kept winning. And look at my look at look. You could look it up. They broke the Lakers up. Okay, they broke them up. They probably went to their management. Say get this. I mean, they went to the uh, owners. Um. I mean, the first thing they got rid of Odom, they knew he, that he was the most important player. If you watch all their games back then, you hear Mark Jackson say uh, how important that, um, Lamar Odom was to the team. They got rid of him. Then what happened? Uh, well, they tried to get rid of him. I think that was, he was going to be part of the Chris Paul trade. The NBA nixed the trade. They canceled out the trade. They killed it. And then all of a sudden, Odom wanted out. They didn't try to do anything to keep Odom. That's like, ah, get out. They didn't con Kobe. Kobe wanted to keep him. Obviously, all the players wanted to keep him. He's the most important player. They got him out. Then Phil Jackson was supposed to come back. You could look up New York Times article. Phil Jackson come back to the Lakers 2011. Definitely going to come back. He definitely wants to come back. He just had a meeting. He told them during the meeting, um, you know, give me some time to think about it. He was going to come back. They hired D'Antoni. They hired D'Antoni. Who can't coach. And then what happened? Kobe goes all out. He's playing like 40-something minutes a game. Like 46 minutes a game, he's killing himself to try to get the team back in the playoff picture so he can go out there and compete. What happens? Blows his Achilles out. It's over. 
I mean, they, they were trying, they were, tr and then Dwight Howard goes, they were, tr they were trying to, to mess that up. They were trying to end it. Um, and then we saw the Phil Jackson situation in um, New York, what Stephen A. Smith said about, they set up Phil Jackson to fail. They went to triangle to look bad. They went to type of office to look bad. It's not because it's bad. It's because they know, A, if you're actually competing styles, it will win just like the Lakers won in 2009, uh, 2010, like they should have won in 2008. It will win just like the Bulls won all throughout the 90s. Starting inside, inside with big guys, mid-range shots, physical play, offensive talent, superstars, physical players, defensive players, rebounders, will win, 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 win over these finesse guys, these skinny bigs shooting all these threes, it will win. They know it will win. That's why they try to make dudes like Melo look bad. I'm telling you, that's facts. You know, I'm, I could do another video on this later, but I have to end this right here, but it's facts. 